Welcome to the Dallas Cowboys vs. Tampa Bay Buccaneers player prop video for Wild Card Weekend. Uh, I'm your host, Jason Gilbo. With me is Patrick Bonin and Jacob Wayne. Uh, we just spent, you know, 20, 25 minutes breaking down this one because this is a, a very interesting game that we got a road favorite in Dak Prescott. Um, a lot of playmakers, a lot of name value in this one, uh, a lot of player props to talk about. Um, Jacob, what do, you, what do you like to start in this one? Yeah, I think... There's a lot of stuff that I'm intrigued by. Nothing that I'm I'm like made official yet, and you can find all my player props on on the page um, on our site where I'm updating that every day. Um, but I, I kind of want to just open up the conversation to you guys. Like, f- first I want to start with the running backs for Tampa um, between Leonard Fournette and Rashad White, where Fournette has, just hasn't been very efficient, but he's seen he saw 21 and a half touches per game in week 16 and 17, and I feel like they're gonna trust him. In this game, like I think he could get 25 touches here. Um, I think Rashad White's probably the better running back, but h- how do you guys feel about those two guys entering this game? I'm, I'm sort of with you where I think the, the you know, longevity of Fournette, the fact that he's been here f- before is going to play out, I feel like, a little bit more. I just think Brady's going to want him on the field, to be honest. Um and the fact that I think you're actually you're getting, I feel like, a little bit of a discount on Fournette because we've talked about, obviously, targeting this Dallas run defense um, that does give up some big plays. Not that Fournette is the most explosive guy in the world, but, like, if there's a hole, he can not take advantage of it. Um, it. It feels low because these are numbers that are typically 45 to even 55 at times. Um, so I feel like there's actually some decent value in a spot where the – Cowboys run defense is exploitable. Um, so I, I think they are intriguing. I do think White's intriguing as well, but I, I think I'm more focused on Fournette just because I, I don't know how much I'm going to be trusting White's inexperience in a spot with Bulls and Brady making all those calls. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I said I should be banned from ever doing these again if I hand out Tom Brady under half a rushing yard at minus 265. But... That's out there. Just throwing it out there. Um, I do agree on the Godwin prop. They've definitely taken a position on his receptions, juicing it up. I'd still probably take it anyway. Another possible same-game parlay leg because the books have definitely laid out a game script here, just given the rushing yard totals. Um, Brady's completion totals are astronomical. It's at 28.5. You can get plus 100 on the over, but that's a a steep and expensive over, uh, minus 130 on the under. Something else to look at, but yeah, I mean, some of these receivers are, are going to eat, and I do think Godwin fits into that mold here. Um, Mike Evans, four and a half minus 150, another one. Um, I don't think it's out of the question that both of those overs can hit, um, just given that the totals we're looking at. So, yeah, I'll be looking at some overs for the Bucks given given the game script here. Um, not too much else. I'm pretty intrigued by Russell Gage. In this game, I think Trayvon Diggs is going to end up shadowing Mike Evans quite a bit, and you'll see Diggs, or sorry, you'll see Russell Gage covered by Nashawn Wright and Trayvon Mullen. Mullen in particular has been awful. He's allowed an 82% catch rate and 137.3 passer rating, and Gage has been pretty involved. He's had over 50% of the snaps every week since week 15, and he actually leads the team with a 36.5 end zone target share over the past month, and... I feel like he's he's a, he's at a pretty good value in this game, right? I think you can play his receiving yards uh, over 28.5 currently at FanDuel. I think that's a nice value. And then his touchdown prop at FanDuel is plus 370. So I think those are really nice numbers for Gage. Um, I think with Evans being shadowed by Diggs and then you know Chris Goblin will be heavily involved as well. But I feel like Gage has been quietly a big part of this offense lately. Yeah, he really has been down the stretch. And that's where I kind of liked some of that stuff kind of shoring up a little bit because I think that was part of the problems of Brady early on is we knew he wasn't going to get a ton of time to pass. I mean, we knew the situation with the offensive line, but, like, he didn't have those safety blanket connections, um, especially when you're able to kind of focus on Godwin, and, and Mike Evans isn't going to be that for him. And you had Julio in and out every week. You had Scotty Miller, like, working in on some drives. It was it was kind of a mess, and I feel like over the last few weeks that's where maybe I'll give the edge to the Bucks of, like, in the terms of, of trending up is the fact that they're just getting regular bodies, more consistent work out there with Brady. Um, so that, that is a plus. Um, yeah, as far as, as far as player props go, um, I'm, I'm on the under for Michael Gallup. Um, it's, it's 36 and a half right now. It's, it's a number that I just, 
I just don't know how involved in the offense that he really is. I mean, he's been trending down quite a bit, and he's never really shown even the breakout game since coming back, um, you know, from injury. Um, and, and as Jacob, you've mentioned, the secondary is getting healthier, and the fact that they are going to work in, you know, other bodies. Like, we have seen T.Y. Hilton come in and get significant snaps and get significant targets, which is not any positive indicator for Gallup. So I just think we kind of just see a mediocre role for him. Um, I think we see, obviously, Dalton Schultz, I see C.D. Lamb, and I do think we see Tony Pollard and, and Z kind of, like, be the more focal part of the offense. And um, I think this number is pretty safe just because Gallup's average depth of target is even crazy high. Like, it's not even like he has the chance to go, oh, here's one or two receptions that are deep targets and possibly hit this over. Um, it's it's not not going to be super ideal, so... Uh, I like I like Michael Gallup under here at thirty six and a half. Yeah, I, I bashed on Gallup in the in the betting picks video, but I mean he's just been bad this year. Like if if we're being honest, and that's that's why they had to pull T. Y. Hilton out of retirement basically. And yeah, like like you said, the Bucks secondary is getting healthier. So this is a Ceedee Lamb game. I think Ceedee Lamb's going to see a ton of volume, and you know that's reflected in his lines for the player props: seventy two and a half receiving yards and five and a half catches, juiced heavily to the over. So not a ton of value there for me. Um, I think if you want to sell yourself in the over, that's fine, but. You get to look at the way that the Bucks played him in Week One, and they, they really tried to make other people beat them, and, and they couldn't. I mean, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if you see more of that this week. So, I think Dalton Schultz is interesting, but again, like he just hasn't been very good lately. Um, nobody in this passing game really had really has other than Sulu and, which makes it very difficult from a player prop standpoint here. Yeah, exactly. Like like you said, it, it was that one big game, you know, that he had it was like, against the Giants, and outside of that, nothing nothing much here. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of tough. I mean, you know, we we always loved uh, Chris Godwin receptions, old reliable, um, but minus one fifty over six and a half. I'm 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 not touching juice at minus one fifty there for that. Um, I I don't have a ton of, of of player props as of now. Um, you know, someone I did want to take a look at was Kate Otten. Um, you know, receiving yards just because I I do think he's going to be. He's, he is going to be utilized in this spot uh, down the stretch. And, and you know, Dallas is, is DVOA is, is pretty solid against tight ends. But I think the volume of workload and the way we're kind of projecting this Bucks offense to work is, is odd and will have some success. Um, I'd rather take his receiving yards. I, I know the play, the receptions are, are juiced up minus 180 over 2.5. But um, I, I definitely think he can be in the range for four to five catches in this spot. And 23.5 I think is reasonable with that type of volume. So... I think I actually like the other tight end in that spot a little bit more comfortably. So, uh, Patrick, anything you like here? Yeah, I I would agree. Um, they I feel like they have played White in some crucial regular season spots this year. Um, I that Saints game comes to mind where they had the comeback. I it might have been Monday Night Football. I feel like he he got a decent amount of of uh, touches in that one. But so for that reason alone, I feel like I feel like Fournette's probably going to see more time. He's going to get more carries in this one. There might be slightly more value on White's line just because it's about half of what Fournette's is. But, yeah, this is pretty wild how low both of these are. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Actually, I guess I was looking at the receiver, receiver props there about the same, so maybe disregard what I was saying there. There, there actually might be some value on um, White's receiving yards in that case. But yeah, as far as, as rushing yards, I'd probably leave Fournette. Jacob, any, anything else for you? Um, it's, a, it's a hard game for player props, I think. I mean, in general, I think we're all having a hard time with, with this one. Um, n- definitely my least favorite game from this wild card slate in terms of player props. And, you know, there, there's a good chance by Monday I'll, I'll find something I really like. But I'm not making anything official right now. Um, again, Russell Gage is someone I'm interested in. And then if you want to take a long shot flyer, and T.Y. Hilton to score a touchdown is like plus plus eight hundred on points bet right now. And it's, it's worth a look. I mean, he, he doesn't have an end zone target share or an end zone target this season, but you know somebody's going to catch a touchdown from Dak Prescott in this game. So yeah, maybe it'll be Hilton. But yeah, I don't know. This is not not the best game from a player prop standpoint. I think Leonard Fournette is somebody to definitely to keep an eye on because I think there's a really high chance that he ends up seeing like seventy five percent of the snaps in this game is. I just feel like they're going to trust the veteran, and, and like you said, Jason, I think they're going to want him out there, with, especially with his pa- his pass protection and his chemistry with Brady over time. Yeah, I think when I open the show, is, there's so much names here that you go, oh, I immediately want to jump on some of these player props. But then when you kind of look at it, especially after us breaking it down where we go, 
hey, you know, you might want to look at Lamb, but like, oh, he's also going to be the feature guy where I really think both of these defenses will hone in and go, yeah, let's let's make somebody else beat us. And I think that's why we kind of immediately jump to the Russell Cages, the Kate Ottens um, of the world. But like you said, Patrick, like the Godwin props have just been money week in, week out. Um, yeah, I'm going to wait a, a little bit on this one. Um, I, I definitely will stick by the under Michael Gallup, 36 and a half. And I, I do like Kate Otten over 23 and a half, but... For the most part, it's it's a game where I, I think I'm projecting a little bit more of an offensive struggle than maybe some other people um, in this spot. But yeah, I think there's better better player prop games that we can probably go with. I wish Scotty Miller was still on the Bucks because, or I don't even know if he was still on the on the Bucks, but I wish you were still seeing snaps of the Bucks because this would be a game where you could totally see Scotty Miller like when they had the Super Bowl season, like he had a couple of those long bombs in the like in the playoffs and. This would totally be a game where I could see that happening against this, this awful uh, Dallas deep ball pass defense. Yeah, he's, you know, two targets, one catch for 36 yards. Yeah, and it's it's on like a third and nine. Uh, <laughs> that's a bummer, man. It's a bummer. I liked him. <laughs> um, I think it's going to wrap it up. There's no real defense special team props that I, I want to take a look at. Um that are that are worth it here so yeah let's wrap this one up um you can head on over and possibly catch maybe a few player props for this game uh, on jacob's page this weekend but other than that uh you can find the rest of our nfl breakdowns uh, up on the youtube channel and some previews up on lineups as well and uh we'll see you guys and enjoy the weekend